Mr. Clown here from Clown Maths. Today we're going to be continuing on with completing the square and we're going to be looking at how we can solve quadratic equations by completing the square. The first thing we're going to do is just look at uh, the rationale behind this and what that actually would allow us to do in real terms, in terms of a graph. So we're going to do that right now and then a couple of simple examples to get us going. Okay, you will need a calculator for this most of the time. So notice here I've drawn the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. And previously we said that if you drew a graph of a quadratic equation or function, you get a parabola. Uh, in other words, a curve like this. And we noted a bunch of points on that curve last time, but we're only going to note two this time. We're just going to highlight them. If I note this point here and this point here, this is where it cuts the x-axis, okay? Now it cuts the x-axis. If you go along the x-axis, you're never going up the way, okay? You're never going up the y-axis. In other words, all the way along this x-axis, y is equal to zero. So if I solve the equation and make it equal to zero, that would help me find these points which would allow me to draw the graph. Obviously, I've done the graph first to show you going backwards, but that would be the rationale behind it. We would be solving this equation by making it equal to zero, and it would allow us to find these points. So in other words, we would be saying we want to do x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals zero. Now, when we did factorising of quadratics and trinomials before, we would be able to <clears throat> sometimes factorise these, and in this case, this one does factorise to get the answer. But not all trinomials can factorise. You, sh you should know that already by a bunch of examples that you've seen that's never factorised. You can never find two numbers that times together to make this, but add together to make this. But completing the square will allow us to get a solution, because the solution could be like 2.3, 4.7, 6.8 something like that. And there'll always be two solutions, obviously. One here and one here, two places it cuts the x-axis. Okay? The only time that's not true is when your curve, its turning point, touches the x-axis. So I'm going to complete the square on this for now, just to show you how this works, and then go through a couple of examples where the answer isn't a whole number. So we'll do x squared minus 2x minus 3. Just from previously, remember to complete the square, I open a bracket, x minus 1, because I've just halved the 2 to get 1 squared. I immediately do 1 squared, which is 1, and take it away, because I'm now over by 1, and I take away the 3 as well, which is still there. But this time, this will still equal 0. So I work out my bit outside the bracket. I've got x minus 1 squared take away 4, minus 1, take away 3, equals 0. And this is now the new work. We're now going to move the minus 4 across to the right-hand side. Like we're solving equations, so we get x minus 1 squared equals 4. Notice we've got one whole thing on the left-hand side, which is squared, equals one whole thing on the right-hand side. And if we do, whatever we do to the left-hand side, if we do the same to the right-hand side, that is balanced and fair, and that's what we can do when we solve equations. So I can square root both sides. So at this stage, you always square root. So I'll get x minus 1 on this side. Square root of something squared is just itself. Equals, now, 2. But remember, it's 2. But it could also be negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. So you always get two answers. And this is now, this is going to give us our roots nice and simply. We take our answers. x minus 1 equals 2. So we've got two separate answers. Or x minus 1 equals minus 2. Now moving the minus 1 across, so that means that x equals 2 add 1. So x equals 3, and for the other one, that means that x equals minus 2 add 1, so x equals minus 1. So we've got two answers, x equals minus 1 and x equals 3. Let's hope that that's what the graph gave us. Minus 1 and 3, as you can see here, where it cuts the x-axis, that's what I've now worked out by completing the square. 
We're now going to go through a few more examples so you can see exactly how this works with photograph or anything else which could confuse us. So example one says solve x squared minus 14x add 3 equals 0 by completing the square. And it says leave your answer correct to one decimal place because that usually when you square root a number you don't get a whole number answer. That's why it's telling you to leave your answer to one decimal place. So the steps are just the same as before. So we write our question down x squared minus 14x plus 3 equals 0 and we complete the square on the left hand side. So we open a bracket and we get x minus 7 squared. 7 7 is a 49 so I take away 49 and I still need to add 3 and that equals 0. So we've got x minus 7 squared still. We work out the minus 49 and add 3. That's minus 46 and that equals 0. This number here will always be negative if this is going to work. And the reason being when you move it over here it becomes positive. Okay, So if you don't get a negative number here when you're doing this it means probably something's going wrong. So the next step is we move the 46 across, so we get x minus 7 squared equals 46. This is the step now where we remember we have to square root. Because the opposite of squaring here is square rooting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We've got the square root of 46 is 6.78233, so 6.78. So we get x minus 7, so it's square rooted now, equals the answer we just got, 6.78233. Notice for now I'll just write down the full thing, 6.7823, because I'll round at the end. If you round now, you might double round, which is never a good thing to do. And remember that's plus 6.78233, but also if the calculator doesn't tell you this, minus 6.7823. Always a positive and a negative answer. x minus 7 equals 6.7823, or x minus 7 equals minus 6.7823. So to get our final answer, we just move the 7 across for both equations. So x equals 6.7823 plus 7, which is 13.7823, or to one decimal place, 13.8, correct to 1 dp. There's your first answer, or for the next one, x equals minus 6.7823 plus the 7. Moving the 7 across, minus becomes a plus. So x, now again you could use a calculator if you really want to do this, and you would get 1.7823, which equals 1.8, correct to 1 dp. And there is my two solutions. Example 2. Solve m squared plus 6m minus 13 equals 0, correct to one decimal place. And it's not told us to use completely square here, but we're using completely square. Okay, so m squared plus 6m minus 13 equals 0. Step 1, complete the square. You would maybe check you could factorise it first and notice you can't do that. So we do m add 3, remember half of 6 is 3, squared. Immediately take off 3 squared, so take away 9, and still take away 13, and that equals 0. So that gives us m add 3 squared. Minus 9 take away 13 is minus 22. Nice. So we move the 22 across to get positive 22 instead of minus, so we get m plus 3 squared equals 22, and remember at this point, this is where we're going to square root. Always once you get to bracket squared equals number, not before. 
So square root in the left hand side, we get m add 3, just taking away the bracket, taking away the squared, equals the square root of 22. And this is where we now need our calculator because it's not a whole square number. So again, we get the calculator back up. Square root of 22 is 4.69 with a bunch of other numbers. 4.69 will be fine. So m plus 3, remember, equals either positive 4.69, but also negative 4.69, because you can always do the negative times the negative to get the answer as well. So that means that m plus 3 equals 4.69 or m plus 3 equals minus 4.69. Final step, simple equation to solve, just move the 3 across for both equations. So m equals 4.69, take away 3, which is 1.69, which to one decimal place is 1.7. And for the other one, m equals minus 4.69, take away the 3, because the plus 3 becomes a minus, so that equals minus 7.69, which to one decimal place is minus 7.7. .7. So we end up with two solutions. The actual maths itself, if you understand completely the square and you can do complete the square, you should be able to follow through, right? The only extra steps are really when you move something across and then have to then square root. From the square root part, it's a new part. I'm going to square root and then have to get two answers, okay? Give it a go. Good luck.